Kashi is essentially sushi swaps, uh, like money market. You can lend and borrow assets. Um, the difference is that anyone can create a pair, and they can set the, um, like basically they are free to create any pairs. Uh, so they add collateral in one side, and then they would borrow the other collateral. So for example, in the USDC X sushi pair. Uh, you provide X sushi as collateral, then you borrow USDC. So I think that's what the bounty is looking for. Uh, and the reason why I say like loans is a bit difficult is because there's always interest when you borrow, but there is no specific transaction that tells you like, uh, you know, what is the borrow interest rate? Because I think this might be. This might be um, dynamic as it changes time to time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we're just going to, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to assume that this is zero, but we'll see how uh, we have to like work around this in our SQL. So I, I wrote down the question here, right? So one is we want to see how much loans have been repaid fully, how, how many has been paid partially, and how many are still outstanding with no repayment, so someone has not paid this before. So there, there is a, luckily for us, there, there are actually two tables. One is in flip side, uh, cross chain, and then borrow, easy borrowing. And there should be, yeah, there you go, sushi here. But you can also go to the Ethereum tables, um, sushi. That's also easy borrowing. And the difference between the two is that this table already filters for sushi on Ethereum. The other table, cross chain, I think has sushi on Polygon. So the table has action, which tells us whether it's a borrow or repay. The borrower or the, yeah, the borrower, um, how much they borrowed or repeat, and the lending pool. And what they borrowed. So in this case, it's USDT. Uh, so so I'll give you an example. Maybe I'll create a table. Oops. So let's say uh, let's call this name action uh, loan. Let's say Alice, right? The most popular name in crypto. Um, borrows a hundred dollars at a 1% interest rate, right? So the loan is 100. Uh, at the end of one year, the total outstanding loan is now 101, because 1% 1 uh, times 100 plus 100. So outstanding loan after one year is 101, right? But if Alice, if Alice pays back uh, 100, Let's say a year later, her outstanding loan, outstanding loan, is still one, right? Because there is an interest rate uh, charged to the amount you borrow. However, if we just calculate uh, where we say Alice borrowed hundred, and then she repaid hundred, like repaid hundred, and we if we were to sum this up like 100 minus 100 you get zero right which is wrong um so we will need to filter for a case where you know whenever you repay more than your borrowed uh you can assume that it's outstanding zero but there's also like a lot more case where like i think of a situation where let's say the interest rate is two percent right and your outstanding loan after one year is like 102 and then you repay uh you repay, wait, where was I going with this? Uh, you repay 100, and then you go ahead and do another repay uh, 2. So then if you were to sum this up without you know, making this into 0, uh, you get negative 2. Or if you made this into a 0, you would have miscalculated the outstanding loan. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I think it will get clearer once we dive into the 
once you dive into the data. So yeah, so these are some things to think about when you're dealing with like borrowing loan uh, data, right? You think about what happens if you repay more than your loan and how do you, uh, how do you cater for that in the query? All right, cool. So let's go into the table. So again, uh, Ethereum Sushi, there's this borrowing table. Oops. Now I want to do like a, I want to convert this raw table into another raw table where I have all the action translated into the amount. So like if I borrowed, I want it to be a positive number. If I paid the loan, I want it to be a negative number. So I'm just going to copy what is important to me. Uh, so block timestamp, hash, uh, origin from address, which I will assume as the borrower here. Landing pool address, which is uh, this, this one, USDC uh, X sushi. Landing pool address. And then... Well, I guess we can do landing pool as well. Uh, oh, we don't have to. Um, amount USD. And then lastly, symbol. Oh, I'll just add. Um, okay, so we've got the, the raw data. Now we want to convert this into negative and positive. So case when uh, action is repay, then negative because uh, maybe this makes sense first. So if I borrowed money, I want to count it as positive because I'm seeing in terms of like outstanding loan. And then when my action is repay, I want to be negative. So I'm taking off the existing loan or outstanding loan and call this as like raw USD, right? Um, let's see here. Yeah, let me just run this. Right, so looks like there's not many people borrowing through Kashi anyways, 7,000 rows. So we've got our raw data here, uh, timestamp hash, the borrower, any pool address, lending pool, symbol, um, and the amount. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, cool. So back to our question, uh, we want to know how many loans have been fully repaid so far? So back to our example here, right? If we were to just count like the sum of all these numbers here, we wouldn't get an accurate number just because of this interest rate uh, issue. So we would have to order the data according to you know each borrower, each lending pool, each symbol. Um, so I can do a sum here. Uh, wait, wait, no, no, no. Um, I'll just call this as raw. Oops. So what I want to do now is I want to create the same table, but I want to include a additional column where I sum everything together according to the borrower. Maybe I can just do it here. Let's see. Sum raw USD over partition by uh, timestamp. You want to partition by the address. You can just comma here, which means it does it to just partition by this, this, and, and others. Uh, lending pool and symbol over order by um, 
I want to sum the amount. I want to sum the amount according to the time, right? Which means like if I borrowed today, I want to sum it. And if I borrow today and I repay tomorrow, I want to sum the borrow first, then the repay. Um, okay. Is there any Kashi entries on the table? Yeah, it's only Kashi because it's under sushi borrowing. What's this? Uh, I'll resolve function sum. Oh, okay. So I need to take this out. Uh, okay. Um, No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So I need to group by here. No, what's this? Some. Hmm. M S raw. Okay. Outstanding S select all from raw. A resolve function. What am I doing wrong? Wait. Is it cause I'm having the timestamp? TX mm. hash. Hmm. Origin address DX hash. Um, some of this are result function sum. Anyone can help me out? <laughs> Am I calling it wrongly? Wait, uh, order by block timestamp ascending. Oh, wait, what? What's this? Oh, wait. There you go. Okay, nice. We've got a better error. Uh, it's not a valid sum. Oh, okay. Does this work? Oh my goodness. Why would I group like this though? Okay, yeah. So what was wrong is because I I worded the function wrongly. It's like double over here. Um okay, what's this? Uh mm -mm -mm. order by okay. Um Okay, I think I need to make it clearer like what is this, right? So let's see. Uh, as current loan, then I'll make another row where it says like uh, row number over, and then this whole thing, and then descending as even index. <clears throat> so, what I'm doing here is I'm saying like. So for example, this person or this wallet, 
0x0A4, they, on 30th of December, they borrowed 13 USD worth of Fay. And then on, eh, sorry, on 21st of, of December, they borrowed uh, 16,986 dollars worth of Fay. And then on 30th, they must have repaid because now the current loan is 13 USD. So let me just include another, let me just include the raw one here so it's clearer. Let's see. Okay. Ah, there you go. Okay, so uh, again, this same person, they borrowed 16,900 on 21st December. So the raw, raw USD is the amount of US, the amount of USD they borrowed uh, for this transaction. Current loan is yeah current loan, and then on the second transaction, which happened on thirtieth December, they repaid because it's a negative number. Repaid sixteen thousand nine hundred, which leaves them a a remaining loan of thirteen dollars. Uh, and I created an event index here, which which tells me like, so let's say I, if I were to filter outstanding equals to one, uh, sorry, if I were to filter event index equals to one, it would tell me for each person and each landing pool address and each symbol, how much their current loan is. So let's just try this out, right? So where origin from address equals to, and event index equals to one. Uh, okay, and then this should tell me thirteen, thirteen dollars. Yeah, there you go. Nice. So, so now we have the raw table to calculate uh everyone's extend outstanding loan. Nice. Any questions so far? <laughs> I know you all saw me like struggling over this for five minutes. <laughs> but any questions? How many have been repaid fully so far? How many have been repaid? Okay, so the next, the, the, I guess the first part is we want to find out how many loans have been repaid fully so far. So that is if uh, our current loan is zero, right? Um, where current loan is zero and event index equals to one. So uh, where current loan equals to... Oh, I missed one part here. I needed this part to say like... Uh, remember earlier we mentioned if they repaid more than their loan, it needs to be set to zero if not we would count the loan wrongly so i think i'll just add this part here so case when this whole row is oh one sec case when this whole row uh less or equals to zero wait less than less than zero than zero else uh this whole thing And then, yeah, I can end NS current loan. Okay. Okay. I'll show you again what it does. So by adding this case when here, um, let's see. SDT. FC. Okay, so this person, 0xff, on the 3rd of January, they borrowed uh, 99851, right? And then they repaid 99922. Uh, and if we subtract this to from, from this, it will be like negative number, right? Uh, but we know it's not negative because they repaid their loan plus interest. So hence why we needed to add the case when clause to make this zero. 
of course this is a bit assuming because it could be that they are not repaying their loan fully just that uh, we don't know the interest amount uh, so I'm just assuming this as zero every time they overpay their loan all right cool so first question is how many loans have been repaid fully so far which means we want to see their current loan is zero uh, for the latest event index so I'm going to say uh, where current loan equals to zero equals to one. All right, cool. Uh, we've got a thousand plus rows. And this should be filtered to each person. Um, so let's say one person has multiple loans. This should only filter by each loan. So if my first loan has been paid off and I have another loan with another pool at lending pool address, uh, that should not be here. This should only cover the loans that have been paid off by person and by lending pool. All right, cool. Yeah, we can just like count the, just like count star here. And this will tell, tell us 1093. So like since however when uh there have been, you know, one zero nine three loans paid off so far. So I'm just gonna comment this out and say like uh, uh this counts the number of loans that have been repaid so far. Oh, fully repaid. There you go. Any questions before I move on? All good? Okay, cool. Uh, how many have been paid partially? How many have been repaid partially? Uh, this would mean that the... This would mean that the current loan is more than zero but less than the initial less than the initial loan huh okay mm. so we we need to create like a unique identifier for each loan so maybe i'll make another so let's say uh insert table so let's say alice right alice borrows 100 uh and then let's call this like um from this pool oh the autocorrect though weather okay uh and then she borrows another you know 200 um same so now outstanding will be 300 <clears throat> and then like maybe Bob, Bob borrows 500 from, yeah, USDC, I don't know, link. Uh, so outstanding is 500. So we need to find a way to, uh, do like, um, event index goes to one, which is this and this, and then max event index to get this. So let's do that. So let's just say, um, let's call this current loan. Current loan uh, from outstanding. Do I call this outstanding? Okay. So I'm, I want to get all the current loans. And I do that by saying current loan uh, select from outstanding where event index where event index equals to one. Yes, that's correct. So origin from address 
the link to address simple uh raw no 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 current loan current loan table uh yep so this will give us the current loan for each person and then i want to get the the max uh sorry the initial borrowed amount um which is let's just call this like initial loan um same thing but i want i want max right i want uh how do i do max here max event index I have to remove the loan though. Uh, where select next? Oh, okay. I can do like um where? Huh. Next event index. Outstanding and then group by all this. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the row where it says this person's loan um when they first deposit when they first borrowed. And I do that by saying like because I had a column that says event index, which one means the latest and then the max means the earliest so if i were to do this and then just try it out and see what happens like select all from initial loan see what this gives me all right cool so the reason why i couldn't do loan usd here is because if i do loan usd and group by loan USD, it will just every row will be a max index, which is not what we want. We only want each person, each landing pool, and symbol the max event. So I need to inner join this with the original table. Um, yes, so let me just do that. So initial loan, let's call this as max index, and then initial loan USD as uh select from this in the joint outstanding on so this m let's call this o on m dot is this right uh yeah it's right So I'm trying to join the two tables together, but I need to join a lot of stuff. So like, I need to copy paste a lot. Uh, landing pool address equals to, oops. Oh my goodness. And then symbol and what else? Uh, okay, I think that's it. Yeah, okay. So here I would want this. I also want this. And this m dot symbol. And then the thing that we want the most, which is current loan. Right? Outstanding. Do we call it as current loan? Yes, we did. Okay. Current loan. Yep, so let's just try it out. Wait, wait, one more thing. Index and m dot in m dot uh max event index equals to o dot event index. Alright, there you go. So this should tell me the first the first instant that they borrowed, how much did they borrow? 
Oh no, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Uh... The reason I know it's wrong is because I see zero, which which shouldn't be the case if it's like your first time borrowing. Let's see here. So max event index. Let me see what's the event index. For these things. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, and eight. Current loan zero, even index like one. Lending. Am I with initial loan USD? I'm grabbing the max index. And I'm inner joining with outstanding on these things. Does it matter if I put this? Single. Huh. Did it borrow zero amount? What? Standing. I need to check this. So I'm going to insert a TX hash here, which means I need to group by TX hash, which would tell me, which would give me a TX hash here. Um. So I'm just pasting the my goodness, what's this? Okay, uh, die. Who is the swapper? Zero X zero seven. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Initial loan max index. Max index. And then the USD I'm joining. From this equals to this. Inner join, right? Yeah. Let's check another one. Doesn't seem right that they're borrowing zero. Oh my goodness, what's this? Self destruct? <laughs> uh, 0x37. Hmm. Current loan table. Event index is one. Um. I'm not sure why this is returning me zero loan. I mean, I'm guessing my my joining here is wrong, but I don't know sure where. Am I joining to the? Oh, I'm joining to outstanding. Hey, wait, no, it's right. Current loan table. So this gives me latest loan amount because index equals to one, whereas this tells me like. Latest, uh, sorry, uh, first borrow transaction, or well, at least I think it should. Uh, let me just check this again. Uh, oops. Oh. 
Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. X even index. Okay, let's try this out. So So I'm just checking like each div each uh address whether they have like how many how many transactions. Oopsie. And oh, from address, sorry. Okay, they've got five, which means our max index is wrong. Eh, no, wait, this is for die, which is our max index is correct, but why is why is that zero amount? <laughs> okay, I guess our the sequel is correct. This thing. Huh. Let me verify it again. Um like this, okay. So this is die. Zero X. Ascending, okay. No, they did borrow. Huh? <laughs> oh, current loan. Okay, I know the I I know why now. It's it's not current loan. It's um, it's supposed to be uh, what's it called? Raw USD. Which is still wrong. <laughs> what? Why is that negative here? Huh. Current loan. Max index is max index, okay. Wrong US index. Maybe I don't do this. No, wait. I'm not sure why, but this shouldn't be negative. USDT. Oh wow, so many. Uh, oh yeah, it is negative, which is weird. Okay, so uh, so what's happening now is I'm taking like the first event or the first borrow event, but the like this person, he there is no recorded transactions of him having a loan, but he is repaying a loan. So I filtered by ascending order. Is he paying? Whose loan is he paying? <laughs> He's paying his own loan, okay. So 
So I guess we didn't capture all repay, it all borrow, which is why when, when I filter for like the first action, it's still repay. Interesting, okay. Huh. I... Maybe the table doesn't go fat. Maybe, yeah. Or maybe there is a different borrowing address that we didn't account for, possibly, I'm not sure. Yeah, like this person's first first uh, transaction is a repay, which is why there's a negative. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll just remove uh, all instances where raw USD is negative because this would mess up uh, our calculations uh, for outstanding loan at least. Okay, I'll just do that. Uh, join where o dot o dot raw USD is more than zero. So it looks like there's there were, there were about hundred and thirty transactions, a hundred and thirty loans where it starts off with negative. Very weird. Okay. Anyways, uh, now that we've got this, we can now just, uh, okay, now that we've got the initial loan, we should now minus the initial loan from the current loan. Yes. So you want to join this current loan table and also this uh, initial loan USD table. So I'm going to select um initial loan and then left join uh current loan table i'm just gonna copy it here left join current loan table um i want the origin address oh let's call this like i this c so many alphabets so I and then I dot lending I dot symbol. Um, I'm joining these two tables on the same things. So this equals to C dot this. And I dot this equals to C dot this. Left join, okay. Current loan. And C dot current loan. And then I dot A, let's see. Raw USD, there you go. And then last but not least, we want to know. Uh, we want to know current loan. If current loan is more than initial loan. So we can just do like. A uh, case when I guess we can this minus, but we can just do like case when uh current loan uh less or equals no wait, less than initial loan, which is raw USD, then uh then like repeat half no half repeat but not full uh, when this equals to this uh, this means when the current loan is equals to initial loan it means you have you have not repaid yet uh, have not repaid ever and then when your current loan is more than your more than your initial loan, then have added in more loan. Uh, and as this call is as like loan status. Okay, nice. Let's delete this and this should run. Invalid identify raw USD where 25 and no 78. Ah. Uh, 
initial loan USD, initial loan USD. Hmm? Oh, okay. I put a dot instead of underscore. Oops. Nice. Okay. So what now we have here is we've got everyone's ex everyone's loans, and then we know what their status is, which is either they've repaid but not paid fully or fully repaid. So in this case, let's say this person, right, uh, OX1, they borrowed USDC from this lending pool. Um, their initial borrow amount is 300, but now their existing amount is, uh, their outstanding loan is zero, which means they are fully repaid. Why is my code saying this, which is wrong? <laughs> Let me see again, wait. When current loan is, when raw USD is less than current loan, uh, when current loan is less than USD. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And C dot current loan not equals to zero. Added more in more loan is same as borrowed. Yeah, borrowed more. Borrowed more money. And then I need to add a new one which says like when c dot current loan equals to zero, then fully repaid. Nice, there you go. Okay. So this person borrowed $61. Current outstanding loan is nine cents. So they have repaid but not fully repaid. Uh this person borrowed 166. Current loan zero, so fully repaid. Nice. And then since they wanna uh they want us to count, we can just count, I guess. How many outstanding and then how many paid partially? Yep. Oh there's another question. How was the average time to repay? Average time to repay. <laughs> Let's see. I guess we can take the initial loan USD with initial loan USD with current loan and then you know deduct the two so we that would mean like um we just take the first time they borrowed minus the first time where the loan has been repaid fully. <sighs> okay, let me see. Uh, definitely too much to cover within an one hour, but I'll try. Uh, okay, so... So this... Uh, this is not this shows the loan status currently. We paid half or fully repaid. Added more. I'm gonna create a new table because I don't wanna ruin this. Um, I'm just gonna copy the rest. Paste it here. So our objective for this one is we want to get the initial loan and the max, sorry, the initial loan and the current loan and then deduct the time. So initial loan, which is this. Initial loan. Um, okay, deduct this time. Okay. Okay, okay, so I need to, I just need to add the timestamp here. Block timestamp, let's call it as S current loan timestamp. 
and then initial max index which is correct uh, for this we can just add in the timestamp wait from outstanding yep okay so I'm just adding a timestamp column in our initial loan table and then I want to say uh, yeah this is okay initial loan and then current loan okay uh, uh, re repay time as I want to get from this the initial table call this I um, join the current loan call this C and I'll say I want the timestamp from from our initial loan let's call this as like a initial loan timestamp make this into a date with yeah date and then we want the current loan timestamp which is this current loan timestamp initial loan timestamp okay cool uh what else we want we want a oops we also want the um origin address so i the origin address who's that joining and leaving symbol yeah right okay so we've got the origin address which is the borrower uh, what pool they borrowed from and the symbol currency that they borrowed and then the timestamp of the two I think that should be correct and then we want to run a date div which is the difference uh, we want a day we want to check the difference in terms of day uh, c dot and this as date of time to repay fully um we want to filter for when the current loan is zero so uh, yeah c dot current loan equals to zero Oh no, what's this? This is 60. There's an extra comma. Okay, there you go. Oh no. Uh... Where, where is wrong? Wrong? Let's try and no join. Oh, I didn't specify join where. Uh, join on these things. Oops. Join on these things. Now rename this as uh, C I C I C E uh, left join currency on na, 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 na. okay, cool. What's the error still? Oh, there's a comma here. All right, thanks, Brendan. All right, cool. Oh, there's a negative. Okay, so negative means I've put the 
things uh, incorrectly. So it should be initial first and then current. There you go, nice. So zero means they paid back on the same day. Uh, and then one means they pay you back the day after, oh, sorry, the next day. Looks like a lot of loans are paid back on the same day. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's it. We can, you know, you can create your own uh, distribution graph, I guess. Um, something like uh, time, oops. Something like time to, let's copy it. And then count star group by and then this should be like a distribution of how many loans were how many loans were paid back uh by number of days so here's the number of days and then the y-axis is the number of loans paid back so 154 loans were paid back on the same day itself. Interesting. Nice. Uh, I think that's it from me. Uh, yeah, loans are a bit difficult to work with. And also, one thing I didn't consider is like uh, liquidations. Because this is a uh, collateralized debt position, if your if the collateral you provided drops uh, in value such that the percentage is not no the percentage past the minimum threshold, you will be liquidated. So you know that is something I did not count for, and hence why the. Uh, remaining loan figures might be different. Yeah, I can share this query. Oops. All right, cool. Um, that's it for me. Any questions before I, before we close the down hall? Down hall, I mean, uh, SQL, wrong, true. None? Okay. I think if there, are none, if there are none, we can end the call. If you have questions, just ping me. All right, thanks for joining, everyone. Bye.